Modern metal is always pushing the boundaries. In the early 2010s, modern metal created the gridded and sampled sound, the incredibly refined and somewhat sterile tone. It pissed off some of the old school peers and pushed the envelope of music production once again. These days, samples and grid alignment are so common and normal that some of you are seeking more natural production approach due to the oversaturation of that particular tone. However, as the gridded approach is still in high demand, let's take a look at making your guitars snap to the grid and lock in just like that. Now, I've always been against the artificially edited approach as I find that it kind of rectifies the human element and makes one guitarist strive for their best performance a bit less. Yet, we are here to explore the different sides of sound and the different vision, not to blame anyone's approach or vision either. And if you wish to sound uber tight to the grid for this particular aesthetic, nothing but respect from me, mate. Therefore, my job today is to show how you can easily refine your guitar DIs to the grid. We will be working in Logic Pro X and we'll grab an old classic of mine, uh, Gift of Madness, where I was much younger and didn't play as tightly to the grid as I could uh, nowadays. Now let's take a listen to the before and after as we always do. So before the edit... Sounds okay. And now after. Sounds significantly tighter to me, and this actually brings up the aggression more. So, in this example, I very much prefer the snapped DIs. Hey there, I'm Dr. Mark Trubetskov, the mad scientist of metal, as some of you know. And I'm here to bring valuable information on mod metal production, recording, and mixing. So, mate, you please go, like, and subscribe so that you do not miss out the new stuff. Let's go! So, let's define the DI editing procedure, take a look at the best applications, the best modes in Logic Pro X, and make it easy and seamless for you. Obviously and inevitably you come across artifacts when editing your DIs, and obviously the goal is to minimize their presence. In Logic Pro X there are different editing modes, and such are slicing, rhythmic, and polyphonic for DIs, and slicing is the auto default mode. And so now let's take a short listen to an example where I demonstrate different modes and which sort of artifacts they introduce, as I find they just differ. And so you have to take into account how they sound and adjust the performance accordingly. So in this fragment here, which I was just editing, artifacts became really apparent. In the auto mode, the default logic rhythmic editing mode, which is slicing, they sound like this. See the metallic ringing sound, which is really apparent. And now if we switch to a different mode that is rhythmic, here's how they sound then. So you can now hear that artifacts are still present, but they sound less noticeably. Uh, they don't ring as much and the waveforms look a bit better, not as chopped as well. So rhythmic mode uh, sounds a bit better in this example here. Then if we try polyphonic... So this sounds worse, really stretched out in a bad way, and therefore rhythmic for this material sounds the best, but you may need to experiment with a different mode if you find a fragment that artifacts a lot and see which one is the least noticeable. After you have established the correct editing mode for your DI, it's time to actually go ahead and switch it on here, uh, rhythmic in our case, and let logic analyze transients. If we go under file here, you can see all the transients appearing at the correct or incorrect 
time points depending on the quality of your DI. My DI here, because I was young and naive, is recorded too hot and it clips apparently. And therefore the transient may not be detected very well. You need to make sure that the amount of those transients is right and matches to your material. In order to do so, here you can adjust sensitivity. If you hit this minus button a few times, you can see that transient starts to disappear. Therefore, some of the hits are not detected, which is wrong for me here, because I know that this is a hit just by listening to the take. If we go and do it, actually. <laughs> Some of the transients are correct and there are some extra ones as well. In order to get rid of incorrect transients, just hit command, click on it and it will go away for you. And so then you just have to make sure that this detection procedure was right. Now I can see that here, uh, this one has not been detected, unfortunately for me. So command and click allows to set those missing ones up for you. Obviously, depending on the quality of your DI, so this one is off you may not need uh, to go through the material that thoroughly but probably you would need to verify it uh, anyways if you want a clean edit actually this transient here seems to be misdetected meaning that it actually has to hit a little bit later so let's adjust that i believe would be a good idea so once that's done we can actually start the quantizing procedure which is, once again, semi-automatic. Here, under Quantize, click which note you want Logic to snap to, and in our case, that would be 16th note. The procedure has completed and it has snapped all the transients to the grid. One important parameter that you may want to consider is the Q strength. This parameter is the percentage of how rigidly, how tightly the edit is performed to the grid. Meaning that if you have Q strength at 100%, then all of your transients will be snapped exactly and immediately to the grid to the 100% without any variation. However, if you allow a more relaxed value here, say 60%, if you look at what happens now, see some of them are not quantized anymore because they were close to the grid to begin with. You can see that this transient here is deviating from the grid in a very minor way and therefore it won't be affected. And this is a way to maintain some human element in your performance. Uh, depending on how much you want it, maybe you don't, uh, this is entirely up to your vision of the sound that you are after. Uh, let's do 100% so that we can actually really hear the results. Next step is to verify the edit and make sure that Logic has not snapped your transients accidentally to the wrong grid. This may be the case when you are ahead or behind the beat too significantly and you are actually closer to the other beat. So let's see if this happens here. What can we do? <laughs> it sounds wrong and you just snap it back. <laughs> Fixed. Now this one here is kind of off to me. like how it enters for some reason it's a bit better and so sometimes actually no edit is sounding better than any edit so you may as well this bit is sounding good but uh, if it didn't, sometimes it sounds artifacty or stretched, or you may have performed the part a bit weirdly, but it works. There is a certain groove to the way you've played it, and then you try to snap it to the grid, and it never happens to be sounding right. In that case, good idea is to just uh, basically remove the transient and let it be as it was. You can sacrifice some tightness in one little fragment, but leave the live filling in and it never hurts when the majority, 95%, is fixed uh, firmly. And that's basically the procedure. You just go ahead, listen to the whole lot and verify it until you find a bit that is off. And then you just go and fix it and on and on until you're done with the track. And so now let's have a listen to the result. How the snapped DI guitars sound as compared to the 
unedited ones. To me, this sounds really refined and polished, and I cannot hear any editing artifacts whatsoever, uh, which is a good sign. And now if we listen to an edited version. <laughs> Honestly, it just sounds plain loose to me. It doesn't sound as good. It may sound a touch less edited, maybe like 5%, but it really isn't that detectable. So the tone is kind of more consistent in that regard, but the performance isn't. And so in this case, I'm much more inclined to actually use the edited DIs, and that would add tightness to the project. Um, and maybe, indeed, rectify some of the human element. So you have to be careful with the edit, and you have to maybe consider some bits unedited to preserve that. But overall, this is a good approach for this particular song and particular uh, musical material. Keep in mind that this is only applicable to the actual DI processing. So, if you've had your amp signal, as is here, and you've, for example, wanted to edit that together with the DI, so that you would have created a group, grouped them together, sliced the transients based on the DI, and apply the same stretching or thinning of uh, the regions to the amp. This would have sounded a million times worse, much more artifacty, much more metallic, ringy, stretched audio, and I would not recommend that. So this is only applicable to DIs and using a plugin afterwards such as uh, this bad boy here, right? Or reamping this later. So keep in mind that this is a limitation of this process. So actually in this example, to my surprise, the edited DIs sound a lot better than the original ones, and they immediately represent the modern metal sound, the tone that we're all used to hearing and strive to achieve. Therefore, if you aim to capture that tone, Go and try this procedure for yourself. I hope that this video helps you to follow the process and inspires you for some new techniques in your audio production. Until next time, take care.